I actually don't think that there is one model that fits everyone. Uh, the energy systems in Europe are integrated uh, with each other. So even if it is true that we have a lot of fossil free uh, electricity and energy in the Nordics and in all of Scandinavia basically, it still means that we are integrated with the rest of Europe. So yeah. we sort of uh, are in this together yeah. still. Um, in uh, the other uh, um, European countries, you can see that the, the situation is based on what kind of natural resources you had to begin with. So the situation differs a lot. In the northern part of, of uh, Europe, it's what you described. In the southern part of Europe or central, Germany, Netherlands, it's a lot of gas and still some coal. So the starting point is very different and so will the solutions be. OK, you use the word integrated twice. Uh, I'm going to come back at you and say nowhere near as integrated as it could be, as it should be, as it will be if we do actually lessen our, in, our dependence not only on Russia but on hydrocarbons more generally as well. We need grids and we need very smart grids and we need them now. I'm very happy to hear that because I completely agree uh, and you know there is uh, potential in producing more fossil free electricity in some of the generation assets that we have up and running today. You can see basically all wind producers especially offshore wind producers in Europe today curtailing their wind farms from time to time not producing at full speed because the grid cannot accept more of the electricity. So it's a very important point but if you can widen some of the bottlenecks that are the most critical ones in Europe that will also get us a long way. What can you as a company do to help ameliorate the higher pain and cost for consumers, particularly in a market like Germany, where we're going to see very soon what the loss of Russian gas means? Yeah. I think there is one short-term and one long-term answer to that. And the short-term perspective is that we can, of course, advise our customers on what kind of contracts, products and solutions, different kind of energy, energy efficiency measures, etc., that they can take. And we also provide payment plans for customers that have difficulties with, with their payment. But the more long-term solution is that there is a fundamental gap between supply and demand of electricity and energy in Europe. Uh, and there we are focusing our core business strategy we call it enable a fossil free living in one generation and it's dramatically transforming where we are putting our investments what kind of assets we have and I think to speed up that transition is the only thing that will actually fundamentally change the situation and increase the supply of electricity in Europe mm. as I understand it you're doing a, a strategic review at the moment of the Berlin heat business but now seems like a really good time to be strategically reviewing a, a lot of uh, operations. As you go forward, how do you see the business evolving to the new situation we're facing? I think that you're right and we are actually evaluating basically all of our business. We do that continuously to see where we have our competitive advantages but also where we think the market opportunities are. Where can we be really good and how do we make sure we focus enough there. So we already started the transformation a number of years ago. We've divested our lignite business. We have either um, rebuilt or closed uh, almost all of our coal plants. We have two left which we also have a plan for phasing out. And now we're looking into how to phase out gas, both in relation to our uh, consumers, but also in our heating operations. District heating is a very efficient way of heating homes in a city and will be key for the transition in Europe. But, but at Vattenfall we are evaluating, is there where we should put most of our focus or should we go for any other of the abundance of, of investment opportunities we have? So it's a prioritization issue, basically. How good is the leadership from the Commission, from the Swedish government and others as well, given the crisis we are now in? And we are in an energy crisis as well. Does, do we need more joined up thinking? I've heard differing views from different utilities and different power companies across Europe about whether the Commission is actually getting its act together or not. Well, I think that if you look at what the Commission accomplished when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and the amount of sanctions that was put in place in a fairly short period of time, I think that is a sign of strength and, and leadership. Uh, now we also see the uh, Repower EU program that was announced just the other day. That's also a really good step uh, in the right direction. But the key is in the execution. And I think what we clearly see since maybe at least two years back or so is that business is now running faster than politics in terms of the transformation. So now we need the prerequisites, the grids you talked about earlier, these shorter permitting processes that are a part of the Repower EU programme, etc. But we need it in reality and we need it very soon. So just on the, uh, uh, are there too many NIMBYs left in Europe? 
Definitely. I would say that these days it's not even NIMBY, it's banana. Build absolutely <laughs> nothing anywhere near anyone. Oh, and that's not that going to work. <laughs>